No. Hi everyone, this is Craig Brody from Investment Motor Cars in sunny Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Today I have the pleasure of showing you a very, very special hot rod with a very 50s old school style. It's a 1936 Ford that originally started out as a Tudor slant back coupe. And a fellow by the name of Dick Werner from Denver, Colorado, uh, designed and made the car in 1975. Today I have the pleasure of showing you a very, very rare hot rod that was designed by Dick Werner from Denver, Colorado in 1975. What he did was he took a 1936 Tudor Ford slantback coupe and he completely refabricated it into what is known today as the Phantom Phaeton. Dick Werner's work is quite uh, amazing, quite remarkable uh, as a matter of fact. He keeps a very, very stock appearance of the car, but yet he completely refabricated the car into this beautiful four-seat two-door Phaeton, which the factory never did make. All the cars were four doors with open tops, so he created what the Ford factory should have. Dick Werner did quite an amazing job with this car. In fact, he made it look most likely what the Ford factory should have done in 1936. Because the convertible Phaeton was only available as a four door. Dick took a slant back coupe and he completely redid the car into what the factory should have done back in 1936. It's a full four seat or five passenger Phaeton two door much sportier, all steel, very, very stock in most appearances. The tops of the doors, the back window areas were all fabricated in to make it look like it was completely done by the factory. The outside of the car, the top is wonderfully, wonderfully fabricated. The fit and finish is absolutely amazing. It looks like the car was done by the factory. Down to the spare tire on the back. So what do you think so far? Is this car absolutely beautiful? Well come on with me, we'll jump on in and we'll take a nice test drive and show you how well she runs. Dick also, when he designed the Phantom Phaeton, he left it very, very stock, very old school, very much like it was probably done in the 50s. That was his style. Notice the steering wheel and the, all the wood, the dash, the gauges, all very period looking. Three speed manual transmission on the floor. That's an original transmission. Has a couple of extra gauges added for temperature and uh, pressures just to make sure everything's running right. Notice on the dashboard in the center, it looks to be like an original period radio. Quite cool. Uh, it has an on and off knob. It has different other knobs, a cigarette lighter, I believe it looks like it's all originally uh, equipped that way. And the detail on the steering wheel is incredible with the, uh, with the stainless steel metalwork and the old Bakelite style materials used. Very, very nice. The uh, interior was completely done in red vinyl. Looks very, very original style. I'm not really quite sure if it matches exactly, but it's very, very conservative. Super roomy inside. The door panels are finished off nicely. As you can see, the interior was done very, very tastefully in red Naugahyde. The back seat is extremely roomy for five full adults, I'm sure maybe seven or eight of your closest friends. The interior of the top, the fit and finish of the top is also amazing. All machine parts, 
all long metal pieces that were designed specific to hold this top in place at very highway speed uh, type of air blast so it really holds it nice very comfortable okay here we go this is a super good running car it's powered by a 289 Ford same motor that you would get in a nice A-code Mustang the three-speed was just freshly rebuilt it shifts beautifully The speedometer shows, uh, the odometer shows 7,804 miles. I'm not sure if that's since the car has been completed in 1975. All the gauges look period correct, but they could be replicas. Again, I'm not the most knowledgeable guy. They could be period correct that are rebuilt because it sort of matches the radio. has a really nice glove box, a nice uh, size glove box for you. The car is also set up with a push button starter and this and this key system that locks the ignition. a couple of the more modern modifications that Dick did in 1975. But as you can hear, it has a really nice, a really nice volume to the motor, a really nice ferocious tone to the custom exhaust. And I'm passing all of these new modern American cars. <laughs> windshield wiper just for you, the driver, and the car is just lovely, it's just really, really nicely done, you can take it to any show, I guarantee this will have more people looking at it than probably most Ferraris, it's just a super, super nicely done car. The details of this car, even from the day it was made, they were very, very Art Deco-y. The grill work, uh, the craftsmanship involved, even down to the, even down to the cool little grills down on the bottom. And notice the headlights, just the curvature of the glass and the, the beauty that was uh, designed in it, like a an Art Deco uh, statue of sorts. The bumper lines, just very classic, very, very simple, very pretty. Uh, notice the fenders, very, very large, lots of room under there. The original tires and wheels were very, very tiny. This car now is equipped with a set of Mercury V8 hubcaps and black wall tires. For a time in its life, while it appeared in and the American Rod or Magazine from 2000, which we have a copy of, it wore white walls. And that story from 2000, the car was lost for many, many years and then discovered again around 1999 by its owner at that time, who got the car back on the road running because it was in a long-term storage. But the car is all steel, there's no fiberglass involved. Uh, all the detail work, the tail lights, uh, just the housings around the tail lights, uh, the back spare cover, the gas, uh, the gas is on the left uh, light, very nicely built in. It has a lot of original bits, the tail lights and 
all the bumpers, kind of the cool custom bumpers for its period. Very, very deco, very pretty. The top is gorgeous. Just the fit and finish of it is uh, very, very far superior to what the factory could have offered. The wooden trim, the metal work, the machine work, just to, to make the top unit was incredible. Let's take a look at the engine compartment at the 289 that was installed sometime in, I believe, the 90s, replacing the original flathead Ford motor, which actually made it far more user-friendly. Stock inside the engine bay, but nevertheless, it has a pretty worked over 289 that was put into the car around 2000. Uh, the car includes a mild cam, Edelbrock Performer RPM cylinder heads, and Felpro gaskets. Other items, a new electric and water pumps, a Mallory distributor, MSD coil, an electric fan, and all new wiring to make the car run its best and get the most power out of that small block motor, still get some good gas mileage, but get plenty of grunt uh, for any type of driving pleasure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, what did you think of this absolutely beautiful hot rod? I hope you liked it as much as I do. Uh, any questions that you have, please feel free to call me. Personally, this is Craig Brody. Our web address is investmentmotorcars.net. We're right here in sunny South Florida. Call us anytime, email me, take a look at the website. Let me know if you have any questions and take a look at all the other cars that we have uh, right in stock, ready for your choosing. <laughs> have a great day, guys.